Good afternoon, everybody. Um, I'm delighted that you're see the numbers here clocking up that uh, there are so many people interested in this talk today. Um, as you're aware, this is in uh, talk is um, about a bridge uh, on the Almont River. Um, their speaker today is Guillermo Capillan and uh, himself and his good friend Jose de Bereza were in contact with us nearly a year ago. We were supposed to have them as visitors to Ireland at that stage, but unfortunately the COVID hit and all of that has been postponed. So it's great that uh, with technology as it is and that we can present it here today. And this too is a tribute to our ability to adapt to its changing circumstances. I'm sure Guillermo and his colleagues will explain the difficulties perhaps that they encountered during this whole process of design analysis and construction during the talk. But um, I also know one of Guillermo's other roles is acting as professor in a university. So I'd like to take the opportunity today to think about the students in engineering who are completing and carrying out their exams at the moment. It's a difficult time for them, so I can't imagine what their experiences of third level is like. But let us just think about uh, how they may adapt to the future as well. So I hope today will be a short break for the students that are attending here today and that they will be inspired by the skills and knowledge of the, the participants and their abilities to, re to react and to find uh, solutions to problems that they encountered along the way. So just to let the students know that in Engineers Ireland, we are very considerate of the pressures that they're under at the moment and that if any of them feel that they need to reach out just to come to us and we can talk through that or go to their colleges and the people in the colleges to help as well. So hopefully today will be a nice experience for you and a good break from your exams. So I'm going to hand you over to John Reddy who is the Group Quality Manager with Ecosem and he's going to introduce Guillermo and his colleagues. So uh, then Guillermo will speak about the bridge itself. So without further ado, I'm going to hand you to John. Thank you, Megan. Thank you very much, John, and, and welcome everybody. And uh, we have a special treat for us all today with a, an award, a multi-award winning speaker, uh, Guillermo Capilan. He's a PhD and a Dr. Guillermo Capilan even, and a civil engineer. And Guillermo has taught in structural engineering at several Spanish universities and is now a professor of bridge design and wood structures at the University of Cantabria. Uh, as CEO and technical director of Arenas and Asociados, he has specialized in conceiving and designing signature structures incorporating the principles of optimization, form finding, constructability, and sustainability. Uh, the project itself speaks for itself with this picture, and I will do no introduction of it whatsoever and hand over to Guillermo. So very welcome, Guillermo, and very special thanks also to Jose Barazueta, who is uh, our link in, in starting this um, seminar today. So thank you and uh, enjoy the seminar, everybody. Thank you very much, John. It's a privilege for me and for people from Arenas. Uh, to make uh, this presentation in this uh, in your institution today. So I'm going to try to start with the design and construction of the Almonte Viaduct in Spain. It's part of the one of the uh, high-speed railway lines. And previous, I want just to introduce uh, our strong background to, to finally be capable to design this kind of structures at Almonte Bridge. Uh, we are in the tradition uh, with uh, in the design of uh, structural architecture uh, elements uh, from Dr. Arenas, is uh, our founder. And we have a strong uh, experience in a long journey to acquire this expertise in, in art bridges. One of the most uh, well known is the Parqueta Bridge in Seville from Juan Jose Arenas from the 1992 Worldwide uh, Exhibition. And this is several views of this very well-known bridge. But there are other bridges, not so big bridges, but very special for us, like Oblatas or here, La Regenta Bridge uh, in the northern of Spain, Morlans Arts Bridge in modern, northern of Spain too. Uh, there are concrete arches, very, very nice bridges. And perhaps one of the most relevant 
a project for us in the last 20 years is the third millennium bridge in Saragossa for the in international exhibition in, in this city. And it's a concrete arch with more than 260 meters span. It, it was a world record for uh, bowstring arches in concrete and some of the drawings here. And uh, we put all our expertise perhaps in this bridge and um, because of the making use of the high strength and high performance concrete. This is La Llamas Bridge. It's uh, with the same kind of material with the high performance concrete. It's uh, here in our city in Santander, uh, which is uh, our uh, headquarters and making use of the concrete always here with precast elements in a massive way and the final view of the bridge. But at the same time, we have uh, in the 25 year, uh, 20 last years, like, the experience with the high speed railway lines. That's very important. There are lots of bridges that we are participating. And uh, so when you try to design a new um, bridge for a high speed railway line, you need to take into account uh, the robustness uh, of, the, of the bridges is uh, necessary and quite different than uh, you, when you are designing bridges for a highway. So we participated in these last 20 years in lots of these kind of bridges. Uh, a part of them are in, in the western of uh, Spain, in Galicia, in one of these uh, railway lines uh, with lots of valleys. We have um, several bridges with more than one kilometer. And in these valleys, the piers are uh, almost uh, 100 uh, tall. Uh, this is Saramo Valladolid, for example, or other Valladolid pretty similar, always making use of uh, these systems with uh, movable scaffolding systems that are um, very typical because you have uh, long viaducts, the, the valleys are very deep, and so normally you, you need to put uh, some movable sc scaffoldings with a standard uh, span of 45 to 60 meters. Other examples, so Exo Viaduct with, with more than one kilometer again. And here, always the problem with the expansion devices and the problems of the fixed point of the structure. This is the Deta Viaduct again in Galicia. So we are participating in all of these kind of uh, viaducts and learning a lot and our knowledge in this kind of uh, uh, highway speed uh, railway bridges that is uh, very uh, complicated from the, the operating and uh, putting in service this kind of bridges because of the fixed points, because of the expansion joints, because the special devices. So uh, we made, uh, an incredible number of them during 20 years. This is Cagancha, Santana, or Villaluengo Valladolid. This is in the same line that Almonte Valladolid, very close to the, the, the main arc. And because of all of this experience, uh, we, we feel uh, tw uh, 10 years more or less uh, uh, ago from uh, now that uh, we start to design the Almonte Valladolid. And we to try to put all of this background on all of this knowledge and savvy in, in, in the design of this bridge. So I'm going to try to put three really different parts of the presentation. The first one, first of, first of all, I'm going to speak about the conceptual design. For us, it's very important to understand why finally we designed this kind of, of bridge, uh, what is uh, concerning to the, to the material and concerning to the structural behavior and the elastic uh, uh, behavior. In the second part, uh, we, we, when we are going to speak about the main challenges. There are a lot of uh, structural challenges uh, when you are designing something like that and how we analyzed uh, all of these uh, elements to, to be pretty sure about the, the final design. And after all, uh, I'm going to put uh, several slides and trying to explain the construction process and all the auxiliary elements that are necessary during construction to materialize uh, these kind of, of bridges, uh, especially the construction of the 
uh, arch uh, is not uh, easier sometimes. And we have a reservoir here with more than almost 400 meters spanning. So we are starting with the conceptual design. The Del Monte Art Bridge is uh, over El Cantara Reservoir. Uh, this is part of the Madrid Portuguese border high speed railway line. And it's a challenge bridge because uh, we, we need uh, almost 400 meters of main span. And uh, we need to respond to the specific problems of this kind of uh, crossings. And we, we need to, to join the, in the design to put together a structural efficiency, especially out of plane stability. It's a problem for, for this kind of very long biadats and the improved response to wind loads. Um, the location of the bridge is uh, uh, very close to the, the border with uh, Portugal uh, because it's part of the link between Madrid and Lisbon. The specific uh, location is very close to the reservoir of Alcantara Reservoir, so we need to cross very close to this uh, situation. And it's because of that we have a, a very, a very large span and we need to take into account different uh, questions when we start with the conceptual design. Of course, the loads, we need to take care with that. This is not a highway bridge. We, we have bigger loads than road bridges. Dynamic effects, that is very important and very demanding. The bigger horizontal loads, especially coming from the braking and traction. And uh, the fatigue, that is very important because of repetitive uh, mobile loads movable loads. Uh, the geometry is a, a problem because the plan and elevation are very limited because of the curvature and the slopes. And finally, we have lots of functional requirements, especially the smaller sm admissible deformation, the very low admissible accelerations and the interaction between the track and the structure. And we have limited length due to rail expansion joists. These devices are very complex and are limiting the, the design. So our uh, main aims in this design is the durability, of course, and the very reduced maintenance, the transverse structural behavior against wind loads, especially, the nonlinear structural behavior because of the material and the, geomet and the geometry, and of course, environmental and landscape integration in the, in the landscape here is very uh, special area. So we are seeking for a global economy, but always trying to have a structural efficiency in the design. If you, there are no reservoir, the, the most normal situation is to have a, a bridge that is uh, just like a standard viaduct over a valley. But the, the real thing is that we are not possible because it's limited, it's not possible to put piers into the reservoir. And because of that, we try to imagine from the very beginning a standard viaduct that is going to be very easy for the maintenance and uh, as a standard as the rest of the viaducts in the other railway lines and with a cross section that is a standard too. So we, we want to, to produce a, a final design that is a, a, a standard as, pos as a standard as possible. Of course, it's not as easy because in this time, it's not possible to put the piers in the, uh, the bottom of the belly. And we need to substitute these uh, tall piers with the arch. But because of the rest of the elements are as standard as possible. With this on mind, we, we have uh, uh, to take into account the construction procedures. That is very important when you have a, a, such a long uh, span uh, arch. So we, we, we have different parts. We have the approach viaducts that the access spans are typical. And we are going to make use of the movable scaffoldings that we have the, the knowledge and we are uh, making use in the rest of the railway lines. There are lots of the uh, availability in the country for this kind of uh, auxiliary elements. And for the arch spans, we need to think in the rest of the bridges that uh, in the other uh, railway lines are done. 
For example, this is Contreras Viaduct, it's 260 meters, and we have the experience, not, not our arenas, but the Spanish know how is the construction of this viaduct is from Carlos Fernandez Casado uh, uh, office. That is a very nice uh, viaduct, but it's not one kilometer, it's, it's, it's just not as long, and so the problems with the fixed point are not the same, but from the construction point of view, it's pretty similar. We need to make use of uh, the cantilever construction with traveler, phone travelers and a pylon that is a uh, provisory. So the deck construction is with movable scaffolding after the construction of the arch and we, we put a, a standard uh, segments over the, the arch. To understand the, 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 the challenges of the, the, the design, uh, we, we put the formula, the dynamic classical formula. We have, uh, uh, we prefer to, to, make, uh, to have a concrete car because of the mass and because of the damping factor that is very important for the dynamic behavior of the bridge and the minimum of the deflections. Of course, it's very important the transversal stiffness. We want to increase the transversal stiffness because of the, uh, the wind loads. And we, in the other part of the formula, we, we, we put the focus in the designing aerodynamic sections for arch and piers. Of course, to increase the transversal stiffness, a very uh, typical uh, solution is to try to put uh, the inclined legs in the foundations as wide as possible. So we try to put more than 20 meters uh, uh, inclined legs in the foundation. 20 meters wide, and this is very typical. Uh, everybody has the, this image in the classical steel arches with this kind of opening uh, inclined legs and other very well-known viaduct is the Garabit and with the same idea, trying to, to put the, the inclined legs. Other of the challenge, if we want to make a concrete arch is the, the concrete. Uh, we, we put here a high performance. We have the previous experience in other viaducts like Third Millennium Bridge or Las Llamas Bridge. They are all with uh, this kind of high performance concrete. And uh, we made a lot of tests trying to, to, to uh, reach to a, a formula, to a mix that is a warranty of the behavior of the material. Uh, so uh, we have the experience with other bridges. This is Third Millennium Bridge. It is uh, all the bridges uh, with seamless, uh, only construction joints, but there is a seamless piece. There are no other joints and it's all with these high performance concrete. Uh, for that, we, we, from the very beginning, we put the emphasis in try to make, to make use of a, a special cement. It's very important to try to avoid the possible delayed etching guide. Uh, the delayed etching guide uh, is possible to, to avoid it if you put uh, a sulfur resistant uh, concrete. And for that, we put uh, the, the Ultraval is our special cement from the Spanish company, the Cementos por Lambal de Rivas in Navarra, in the north of Spain. It's a very innovative uh, uh, cement and all the bridges with this kind of uh, special cement. The, the, the final aim is to have a high performance concrete with 80 megapascals, self-compacting concrete. And it's a, we, we tried. And in the other part of the formula, of course, we are worried about the loads. The loads um, coming from the movable loads uh, of the, the, the trains that are well uh, movable uh, trains, uh, but the other is the transversal behavior. And that's because we have more than one kilometer viaduct and the central 400 meters, there are no transversal uh, elements to restrain the deformation, the transversal reform deformation and deflections of the deck. When you have a, a not so, so long a viaduct is easier because the transversal stiffness of the deck is uh, sufficient to, to guarantee the accelerations and the vibrations in the transversal direction. Here, 
the wind loads and we are in a valley and we have we are concerning you know, the transversal behavior so we compare uh, this viaduct uh, the accelerations uh, the transversal accelerations with other um, constructive viaducts that is in service in other railway lines and because of this comparison of the deformations and the vibrations we try to control the transversal uh, the formations and deflection of the deck. So the arch is very important for that. So we open uh, the, the inclined legs to try to increase the transversal stiffness, but at the same time designing aerodynamic uh, section for the arch and for the piers. We can see here in the bottom of the image, the model view for the low turbulent flow essay. We are going to comment it uh, in other moment, but this is in Western Ontario, Canada, University in Davenport's lab, and it's part of the lab test. Okay, with all of this, we finally designed the, the construction process with the traveling forward, the, uh, with the, all the elementary provisory cable state towers and movable scaffolding system for the completion of the arch. And after this, on the arch closure, uh, we put again the, the, the movable scaffoldings to complete uh, the, the deck to complete the task. I, I used to put this image because on the left is the image during the project. We are uh, putting all uh, our effort in trying to, to anticipate how it's going to be constructed and to be as realistic as possible. And on the right side, we have the, the real situation during construction. If you compare, we have the, 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 the towers not in the same aligned in the same direction, but it, for the rest of the things is pretty similar. Okay, so the final selected design is something like that. That is easier to understand with the fixed point, the crown of the arch with inclined legs opening to the foundation. And this chosen arch is for us the most economical in terms of construction costs because of the previous experience in this kind of structures. In addition, the deck is a conventional uh, uh, section it's a pre-stressed box girder with 40, uh, four, uh, 45 meter span that it can be erected with uh, conventional overhead cash in situ model scaffolding. And the design is also for us the most appropriate from the durability point of view because uh, uh, of the concrete, a special concrete that is not very reduced maintenance. Uh, of course, we uh, are uh, improving the behavior with this solution under dynamic effects. And for us, the bridge is also more environmentally, environmentally friendly. The final solution with something like that, we have the, the total uh, multi-span viaduct with uh, the, the arch over the reservoir. And the, the concrete finally selected is a self-compacting, high-strength, high-performance concrete and for an octagonal hollow section in the, in the arch. Uh, and both legs are laid together in the seven and 14 spandrel columns. So the arch has a, a depth on the foundation of 600.90 meters and in the crown of 4.80 meters. Uh, the width of the arch is uh, six meters at the crown. So in these drawings, you can see the, the definition of the geometry and the variation, the variable uh, cross section that you can see in the plan and the, in the elevations is var a variation of the depth and in the octonal hollow section that is transforming to a, a double inclined legs. The piers are almost uh, 80 meters uh, tall and are conventional. And the foundation is very complex because we have the rock there, but uh, the, the orography is uh, not uh, common, it's very complicated. So we need to adapt to fit uh, to the ground, the foundation. So it's with several different uh, phases and stages for the concreting and putting the concrete in this foundation. We have a provisory anchorage that is necessary in the retaining foundations because of the construction process. And we need to define these anchories and to the dimensions and of these elements. And the construction process is something like a starting on the movable scaffolding and the piers. And at the same time, we start in a cantilever method for the arch. And at this point, we finish with the possible 
uh, backstays and we need to put a provisionary a temporary a tower to complete the pylon and we, uh, we can keep on uh, uh, advancing in, in a um, cantilever construction and finally we are in the crown we remove all the provisory elements and we start again with the movable scaffolding in a symmetric construction is the best from the uh, uh, coming forces and loads for the arch to try to be as symmetric as possible and finally we have the arch so uh, the conceptual design more the key elements are these this from the structural analysis uh, we, we are going to try to introduce the, the main challenges of course these challenges for this structural analysis are we need to detail the, all of the construction stages is very important because of the final geometry of the arch, because of the uh, creep and shrinkage of the concrete, because of the, um, we're making use of lots of auxiliary elements, movable scaffoldings, travel, traveling foam work. So it's very important to put the, 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 the loads and the uh, pre-deformation, the pre-camber uh, that is necessary to, to get a final optimal configuration of the shape of the arch. Uh, because the finding uh, of an antifunicular arch aces is very important to avoid the bending moments and try, trying with this to avoid cracking of the concrete. We all the, are dimensioning uh, all the sections trying to avoid cracking during service states. Only in uh, ultimate limit states we have uh, several crackings that is uh, we are avoiding this in service and we need to analyze this uh, uh, non-linear forces and detailed dynamic analysis, uh, of course, mm -hmm. other special studies that is necessary to confirm it, for the confirmation of the behavior in the, the wind tunnel test. For that, uh, we develop a very precise and detailed models, uh, computer models. Uh, this is in this case with Midas Sauer with all the construction pro process stages. And you need to take into account all the elements that are uh, here. Even some of them are parametric because we, we are not really sure about the final modulus elasticity of the concrete or the, or the time is going to be constructed. So we try to anticipate that in this kind of models. And after the, the cantilever construction, we have the, the, we remove the elements and put the movable scaffolding to the final configuration. Of course, to obtain the final shape of the arch, that is very important. We, we have a form finding process that is a step iterative procedure uh, that needs to take into account uh, the geometrical adjustment uh, of the different cross sections. And basically to try to have an antifunicular configuration, uh, as I commented, trying to not to have bending moments and trying to avoid the, the cracking of the of the uh, concrete. Of course, other challenge is the stability out of the plane in the transversal direction. And for that, we need to take into account a nonlinear analysis using, again, a step iterative techniques. techniques. And uh, with a pre-deformation with the shape of the first vibration mode of course, in the dynamic uh, analysis, we need to put uh, all the different high-speed railway load models. There are more than 10 uh, coming from the H, uh, HSRA, HB, and HSM. And with the speeds that needs to go from 20 to 20, getting from 20 to 420 kilometers per hour, and needs to evaluate this behavior for all these velocities. And we need to warrantee um, uh, the, the durability uh, with the cracking, as I see in the state limited of service. The geometry of the arc and the cracking criteria of uh, this, uh, we need to, to it's not uh, a parabolic shape that is a common from an uh, antifunicular because we have here uh, movable uh, elements that is very important loads and dynamic behavior. So we need to put, uh, uh, the dynamic behavior uh, into account 
for the designing of the no cracking section. So we try to put the, the thrust line of the arch inside of the kernel to avoid these compressions. And because of this, we, we, we put uh, in the, this is the static uh, analysis uh, slide. In, in the black lines, you, you have the, the kernel of, of the section, this variable, because there is a variation of the, of the cross section. So you have this variation. You, you go to the foundations and you have more depth of the kernel. Uh, to, to put the thrust line. And this is the, the statical analysis. And as you can see in the red and blue lines, that's no problem. We have no cracking. There are no, only compressions in the section. But when you are the, you perform, you develop the, the dynamic uh, analysis, you have the amplifi uh, amplification. And you have uh, here the, the relation between the kernel, the central part of the, the section, you need to have the, the thrust line and the blue and the red. And as you can be here, you fit the, the cross section in, in order to not to have in cracking at these positions, but taking into account the dynamic behavior, not only the static behavior. So for these uh, calculations and models, uh, we put the geometric nonlinearity, but the material properties is very important too, according to Eurocode 2. And we, we, we put uh, the shrink rich and cliff of concrete and the effects of the construction stages and assembly sequences. Uh, for that, it's very important the, the, the concrete quality control and the strength testing. It's uh, lots of work to do if you want to, to put a validation of a mix uh, to make use during all the construction elements. It's because of that uh, we develop lots of compression strength fabrica uh, fabrication tests. And uh, we have a several control, uh, quality control for that. Here you can see the, the frequency for uh, our concrete for seven days. You, you can see here that uh, we are almost uh, in 85, mm, uh, 85 uh, megapascals. And, but um, for 28 days, uh, we, we develop a medium uh, value of almost 100 megapascals, and this is the same for 56 days. So as you can see, we, we reached the, the, the challenge of having a mix with uh, this compression strength. And to get that, we need to control the elasticity modulus. That is very important too. So we developed several tests uh, for that, trying to, to put, uh, uh, excuse me, I'm going to try to put here the, the test uh, here of the sink rate and, and, uh, and creeping. And we developed during the construction this uh, uh, test in order to control that the behavior along the time of the, our concrete is uh, more or less the same we have in our models. We calibrate our models during the construction to try to, to, to have a twin uh, model that is a real model uh, according to the deflections and the behavior of the real structure. So for that, excuse me, I'm putting this very fast, this element and going back here. To control that, we put a gauges. This gauge is embedded in the concrete. And with that, we are going to control the temperature with the sensors of the concrete in the arch and in the rest of the elements. So in these uh, diagrams, you can see here the control over the time is the recorded temperature inside of the arch that we are very worried about uh, of the possible de delayed ethylene guide. And here we are uh, monitoring the, the behavior of all these gauges on, on the, the monitoring all the behavior of the concrete. So uh, this control is during fabrication. This is the, the, the cur curves for the fabrication temperature and during on site, uh, how is uh, evolving the, the, the final temperature, putting under control not to, to put over a maximum temperature in order to avoid this uh, uh, delay ethylene guide. That is uh, one of our concerns. So with this monitoring, we have the, always the, the control on site of the quality 
of the of the concrete, but we test uh, several parts of the concrete. We we recover part of this concrete uh, on site and go to the uh, electronic microscope in order to review that is not uh, any problem with the etringite or other possible possible failures in the concrete. If we have massive elements in concrete, we, we need to control that. Okay, this is the, the same curve with the creep and syncrete. I previous mentioned it and the certification is very important to put into control all of that. In the calculations again, uh, we, we have the, the, the problem of the, 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 the material, but we have dynamic calculations that is very important too. So our models, precise models, we were capable to identify the amplifications and impact factors for the deformations and the bending moments and in order to uh, the verification of uh, the integrity of uh, our uh, structure. So here are several images of the impact factor and the real effect of the dynamic in, in the uh, bending moments and the nonlinear uh, behavior of the arch. So the, we need to control the vibration acceler accelerations because of the comfort of the passengers and because of the possible fatigue uh, behavior. The other part uh, that if we are concerned during the calculation is the, the real uh, loads, the wheel loads that we have. And because of that, we develop these elastic studies. We, we put a, 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 a cross section for the arch that we have a previous experience in the third millennium bridge, our section that is octagonal two. And we try to, to put these uh, chamfers in the cross section in order to, to get a very aerodynamic, uh, a good aerodynamic uh, section. And for that uh, a full uh, model is constructed. This model needs to be uh, in tune with our models. And this is part of the construction of the model, always very interesting in Western Ontario, California, uh, 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 Canada is in the, the Davenport's lab. And we put here the calibration and the instrumentation of the spine of the arch and the rest of the elements in order to have a full model that we put uh, these monitoring elements, uh, even with the vibration and accelerometers uh, in the arch. The, we put the same accelerometers in the arch during construction that we have here in the in the model. And when, it, when it's all assembled and completed, we put in the boundary layer. Of course, we have several and different directions for the wind direction. And so we are capable to rotate the, 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 this model uh, inside of the wind tunnel. And uh, even we are verifying the model during construction with the temporary towers and the rest of the elements in order to check that there's no uh, special problems of vibration of the cables or other elements during construction. That is very important. And we control that uh, during construction. Even we develop several elements that is necessary to control the vibration of the cables with two mass dampers and other elements to try to, to put this in, under control. OK. I don't want to put more in the structural analysis because it's perhaps the more boring part. Uh, there, are, there are lots of challenges and very interesting issues uh, concerning the, the structural models and the analysis of the materials and the wind tunnel tests. But I'm going to now to try to introduce the construction that is putting all of these ideas in the real thing that is to try to materialize the, the arch in, in, on site. For that, we, we, we have a construction company that is a Spanish construction company, is FCC. It's very well known. This is a very big company. And with the experience in, in the installation and fabrication of the, 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 the concrete, and okay, we are very comfortable. The, the real thing is they are very, very professional. And thank you very much to all the team from FCC and Condoril. The, the, the construction process is going to make use of the pylon method, cantilever construction, that we uh, are commented. And for that, we have the, the image with the previous ideas and the previous image during construction, during the project, develop, uh, developing project, and the, the real thing. 
For that, uh, the, the most important elements are the, the, the of course, the, the traveler, the phone traveler is very important here and is crucial for the design of the, the loads and the, 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 the shape of the arch and the, the, the forces in the cable stage, cable stage. The temporary pylon um, is uh, two parts. One is the temporary tower and the other is a main pier that is uh, used like a temporary pylon. And uh, the, the fund foundations uh, are very important here because we have anchorage to the ground in the foundations and the retaining foundations and the temporary states. Of course, there are temporary tower cranes that are more conventional. We are going to try to explain every each of the these elements. It's starting from the arch foundation, that is a massive concrete foundation. And this springer is uh, very uh, wide, it's 40, uh, almost 40 meters wide. And we need to put the uh, concrete in different uh, stages and putting the concrete in these stages in horizontal uh, parts, the segments, trying to avoid the, the temperature, to control the temperature uh, of, of, the, of the mass uh, concrete. For that, we are we have the reforms bars, but we have different elements here that are very important connecting the different stages and for uh, the anchorage of the elements, the final elements. Uh, here we have the, the foundation and the, the reforms bars of the, the main pier. And we have the retaining foundations that is even more complex than the, the main foundation of the arch. And this is because these retaining foundations, we need to put ducts uh, with uh, steel frames, as you can see in this slide. Uh, they are, are necessary to put the, the anchorage coming from the main pier uh, during the construction process. So uh, it's necessary to put all of this inside of the retaining foundation uh, with a correct uh, uh, alignment of these elements to, to have no problems with the cable stays and with the uh, back stays that is necessary during the construction process. For that, these ducts and the installation is necessary to, to put in coordination with the ground anchors at, after the footing construction. We put this anchorage uh, to the ground and put the prestation of these elements. Okay, the arc erection is other element that is very complex. And for that, we, we make use of the a special phone traveler because at the very beginning, we have uh, two inclined legs, but after that, we need to put uh, only one section, central section of the arch. So we need to transform uh, these uh, phone travelers from two to one. Uh, like a trans real transformer, and is because of that is a very complex steel structure. So, for the piers, the piers are very standard piers. We are, we have a, a typical section for this kind of viaducts, and so is the, the the most easy part of the of the bridge. But uh, they need to support the movable scaffolding that is coming from, from the abutments to the central part for the deck. But it is very standard and common that uh, we prefer to do that. That is a, a standard viaduct uh, with no other problems. The main pier is at uh, almost 80 meters uh, tall, so it's quite different. And even they are important during the construction process because we need to put the, the, the cables cro across the section of the pier. For that, we need to introduce inside of the piers uh, the elements that they are going to uh, be necessary to put inside uh, of the pier the, the cables. And for that, we make a digital model and, and, and we put an assembly of these uh, frames and ducts in, in the ground. And after that, you put the erection into the pier. Okay. The number of the segments is, uh, depends, is uh, not variable. At the very beginning, uh, we put uh, nine meters that is not with the phone traveler, because it, it, close to the foundation, but most of the dowels uh, are a typical segment length of six meters and 74 centimeters. And uh, as you can see here, the dowel number one and number two are uh, done with a classical false work 
uh, supported the, in the ground directly. Here are some pictures uh, with the reinforcing bars in, in these dowels, starting dowels. And this part is not so uh, difficult because it's possible to put this false work. And this is the pulling of this uh, initial uh, dowel. And we, here we have the, the first dowel of the, of the inclined legs. After this, this is the, the final image of this uh, connection on liquid or with the abutment, the concrete, uh, the, the concrete arch, and the, the pier. That I, 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 for me, it's very, very nice to see the, the, the connection of these uh, very massive elements. But finally, you have this image that I think is very peaceful. The phone travelers is the, the, the next element uh, that is very interesting. Of course, they are very complex structures because they are movable, because this is the front view and the rear view of this movable scaffolding. In several configurations during putting of the concrete, during launching. So you need to have a very precise and detailed elements of all of that. It's a very, there are lots of responsibility uh, in this phone work. So we need to put all our best in the designing. Lots of people are going to work. The workers are work uh, all day uh, over the reservoir with more of uh, more than 100 meters over the reservoir. So for us, it's very challenging uh, try to put all of this. Uh, FCC uh, is uh, put in charge of the designing to a Spanish, uh, to a Spanish a firm that is uh, Rubrica, that is they are the responsible for the final design of these elements, taking into account the different configurations during the construction stage. And I have here a, a, a video with that. And as you can see here, this is uh, the, the first position during the, the pouring bed. After concreting the dowel, you go into the next position, climbing through the inclined leg. Okay. So all the process is in the same direction. So they are capable to climb with no other help. We have jacking, uh, we're jacking from the, from the arch, of course. And from two legs, the, the, the challenge is that you need to put, uh, to, to change the, this. This is the interior form work of the uh, cross section. But the final situation is how to go from the, this uh, inclined legs with two elements to just one form one traveler. That is form one traveler. Finally, here you have the final configuration. And after this, you, you, here's the join segment. And from this situation, the rest is just one central arch with the octagonal shape. And we have the, the, the both phone travelers coming to the crown. And after this, we descend the, the travelers to the reservoir, checking these elements. And we have the control with uh, of the geometry of the phone travelers and the arch. Other elements that are necessary and the tower cranes. These tower cranes, we have four tower cranes. You need to study how the, the, the concrete is going and the reforms uh, bars are going to go to the front of the cantilever. And for, the, for this, it's necessary to put different tower cranes with the range of these tower cranes. As you can see here in the plan, we are capable to, to put the, the, all the necessary materials in the, in the crown and in the cantilever dowels. And that's not a problem. It's uh, typical tower cranes. The temporary stays that they're special. We have the anchorage, not only in the arch, but we have in the retaining foundations. We need to be capable to, to, to put in charge and to, to re, re uh, tension uh, the cable stays depend on the geometry of the arch to try to, to maintain the, the correct shape of the arch. And all of these elements are very important. In fact, during the construction, it was not necessary uh, to, 
uh, re stress the, the tendons, uh, more or less, uh, we have an initial tension and this more or less the behavior of the cantilever is pretty similar with our models. The, these cables are pre-assembled in, in the deck. And after this, the installation and the erection, crossing the piers and in the arch. And here we have the pre-stressing uh, operation of these cables that is uh, very typical, not, not very difficult. And we are capable to, to, to do several adjustments if it's necessary of this pre-stressing. The temporary tower, that is very important element because it's necessary to, to keep on with the cantilever construction because the main tower is not sufficient tall. The total uh, height is necessary is more than 140 meters. Uh, we, we think in a pin connection detail is necessary because it's easier the dismantling uh, of the tower when, uh, when you finish the, the operation. So because of that, it's think, uh, like it's a steel tower with a pin connection and it's possible to put into position during the construction process, but to remove the, in the, easy, in the same operation, to remove the, the, uh, the main this tower is not necessary to cut or even to make different, uh, very complex uh, operations because uh, with this pin join is very easy. Okay, some of the pictures of the erection is in position and in use. So we 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 pawn with the cantilever construction and we have uh, it's possible. We have the retaining foundations. We have the anchorage. We have the the forward traveler is now just a central uh, only octagonal hollow section. Of course, we need to work sometimes during night because uh, it's a very intensive construction process. And finally, <clears throat> we are very close to the, to the crown, um, the final uh, dowel. And after this, there are the distending of the, the foam travelers to the reservoir. And we, we remove these elements. Here is just only one foam traveler. The other is uh, on the reservoir. And a final configuration of the dowel, crown dowel, with these bracements that are necessary to put into position the both cantilevers during the concreting of the final crown dowel. And after that, we are starting with the spandard columns. The spandard columns are very easy to do. It's not a problem with a classical firmware. And again, uh, we keep on with the deck construction with the same method of the, of the movable scaffolding system. But this time we need to put this movable scaffolding over the arch. We try to put the, the, this uh, in the more as symmetric as possible. It's not always a totally sym symmetrical construction process, but we try to avoid uh, asymmetrical dead loads over the arch. This is part of the drawings of the, this movable scaffolding, this top core in this case. And here several images um, concreting the deck inside of uh, this uh, movable scaffolding. It's, very typical, no, 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 not very difficult. After that, we have this symmetrical construction of the deck and the final elements, we remove one of the uh, movable scaffoldings and we keep on with the one of the systems. Yes, the other is not necessary. And here we have the, the final construction and the, the final view, this view is from two weeks ago, more or less. Right? And this is the very, Nice aspect of the concrete. Mm -hmm. Here we have a, a, a time lapse. I'm going to try to put the, this time lapse.
Okay. It's uh, just a few seconds, but in fact, it's more than four years of hard working. But finally, it's very, very satisfying uh, being successfully uh, constructed. This, this, this. Uh, this is the loading test. After all the construction, we have the, the loading test, of course, that is not very important but because, in fact, this loading test is not uh, is very, very far from the, the real dynamic loads of the trains and even the, that load is so important in, for this bridge that uh, this test is not very important. I, I want to, finally, I want to, to result the, the, the monitoring of construction. It's very important that during the construction to, to try and to be as, uh, not worried, we are worried, of course, but not <laughs> too much worried during the construction. It's very important to have a full scale measurement program. We have more than 100 points of data record in each side of the bridge. And for us, it's quite important to, to, to have all of uh, the quantities under control. And because of that, we put accelerometers in the same point we have accelerometers during the, the wind tunnel test, we, pulled, we put a lot of uh, elements to control the temperature and the, the uh, gauges uh, inside of the concrete. And okay, so there are kilometers, stay cable, strain gauges, and lots of these elements. Some of them are for the construction, and some of them we, we maintain for the long term monitoring that we feel is very important to, to have a a model that is capable to know if there is several injuries or several problems with our viaduct. Because of that, we finally we have a program for long-term monitoring with lots of uh, different elements. And we have a, a twin model uh, of calculation model that we are capable to anticipate the behavior of the, of the structure. On conclusions. This is a major project. Uh, the, the, we feel that they function as a landmark for a landmark for a high speed railway link in, in between Madrid and Portuguese border is accomplished. Uh, the, the special challenges is because of the dimensions of the arch, uh, because of uh, the, the quality of uh, the, uh, the innovative structural system and the aesthetic design. Uh, we have lots of uh, challenges because of the special and complex uh, movable scaffoldings and special uh, tablet phone works. Of course, we have a very uh, innovative material. There's a high strength self compacted concrete. And for us, it's a very complex bridge, but it's a combination and a final uh, success because of the previous background we have uh, with the high speed railway lines and with the design and construction of arches. Thank you very much to all the, uh, the, the great team. This is done because, uh, because of the, 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 uh, uh, they are uh, involving like uh, very, uh, very motivated people. If not, it's impossible. Thank you very much to Juan José Lorena, Sector Beade, Emilio.